Now, on my kicker tonight, I think it's time to regulate religious organizations, especially the so-called churches. Yes, it is time that they too, they too observed the law of the land. It is time their existence and operations became compatible with the laws of fellow men, the mandate of the constitution, and the sanction of government. My argument is simple. The people behind these so-called churches have gone rogue all in the name of faith, in the name of Jesus, and in the name of God. The so-called prophets and men of God must be accountable to a being other than God. Here are my reasons. In the name of Jesus, a supposedly mighty prophet of God is at the center of an intriguing property dispute. In the name of Christ, a self-declared bishop has become one of the wealthiest real estate operatives, but the source of his wealth could well be traced to the pockets of thousands of unsuspecting investors who put their money in a saving society that soon went down with their funds. Folks, we are dealing with thieves, not men of God. These are cold-blooded evangelical vampires living off the blood of their flock in the name of Jesus. They are con men who must have their date with our police and our law courts. It is time to stop them. Some of them preach prosperity, but only they profit. Their birthdays are major events on the religious calendar of their devotees who raise money to buy mom or dad or both expensive gifts that range from designer watches to top-of-the-range cars. They live in palatial homes that would make the late drug lord Pablo Escobar blush. And even the Russian oligarchs and Arabian oil sheikhs hide their faces in utter embarrassment. The proceeds of Sadaka, we should say. To these characters, Sunday, a day ordained as the Lord's day of rest and worship, has become the most profitable day on the trading floor. Offerings flow like a mighty river and onward into their private accounts in the Lord's name. In the villages where the population is even more vulnerable, these spiritual fraudsters are having a ball, eating off the hard labor of the poor, from their chickens to their cereals and even their coins. These gluttons sweep the land like locusts. Some of these preachers claim to have powers to perform miracles. Some of them at a frequency that by far exceeds the total number of miracle stories told across both the Old and the New Testament books of the Bible. <laughs> Some now even claim to have the power to resurrect the dead. You must have seen that recent viral video of a staged managed resurrection miracle from South Africa. This is certainly just one of the many bizarre activities that made the government of Rwanda to act. Now, President Paul Kagame is a no-nonsense man. He can tell a financial swindler from a preacher. Kagame wondered aloud why the capital city, Kigali, had more churches than boreholes that can provide clean water. And in April last year, he ordered a shutdown of over 6,000 churches that, quote, did not meet the required standards. Among the required standards is a requirement that pastors have a theolo theology degree before they start their own churches so that they can teach the correct doctrine. Here in Kenya, we toyed with the idea of regulating religious groups, and the closest we ever came to it was in 2016, when former Attorney General Gideon Muigai proposed regulations that, among other rules, required preachers to submit certificates of good conduct and their theological training certificates so as to be licensed to run churches. These are the rules Kenya must revisit in order to restore sanity in the preaching enterprise, I call it. Rwanda set the pace, Kenya should follow suit. Preachers must be accountable to a being other than God, and that is the law and fellow human beings who include their vulnerable followers. And let me end with some full disclosure here. I am a church-going, 
son of a retired Catholic catechist, a trained and qualified holder of a teacher of religion certificate from the Catholic Diocese of Arusha, Tanzania. Just in case. Good night.